All right, guys, our next guest is coming up a classic war at UFC 205 that won Fight of the Night Honors, where he took on Tyron Woodley. He joins us back on the program to reflect on that fight and more. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, how about that? He's back on the program. Welcome to Submission Radio. How's it going today, Stephen? Doing great, my friend. Glad to be on with you guys. It's great to hear your positive voice, and we really, really appreciate you taking the time. There's a lot to talk to you about, so we'll get straight into it. Uh, have you had the chance to watch the fight yet? And if so, how many times have you watched it? You know, I've only watched it one time. You know, I got back with my coaches, um, uh, sitting there looking at, um, you know, going back and watching the fight, looking at the things I needed to work on. Uh, that's one thing we always do after a fight. If it's a first round knockout or a five, five in a round fight, we always go back. We watch the fight just to see what I can go back and, you know, fix things. And uh, that way, next time I step out in the octagon, I'm going to be better. Just quickly on that, uh, what did your coaches say when you guys rewatched that? What were some of the comments that came out? You know, um, obviously, one of the biggest things was coming in uh, a little bit heavier. I was walking around around 182 uh, about two weeks during the, before the fight. Uh, when I stepped in the, oct- in the octagon, I was weighing about 178, which is way too light, especially when you're fighting somebody like Tyron Woodley, who's probably stepping back in there at 195 or 200. So uh, we're going to be walking around about about uh, you know a heavier weight, 195, staying around there. That way you see a bigger, uh, stronger Steve Wonderboy Thompson. Wow. A lot of people looking at this fight predicted that, you know, you were going to be able to stay on the outside and pick him apart. You certainly had your moments where you did exactly that, but you also had moments where, you know, he was able to implement his game plan and dominate. Just curious, now that the fight's over, what was the game plan? What, why do you think he was able to have so much success against you compared to your previous opponents? Well, you know, there, there was a few things that happened. You know, um, you know, of course, in the first round, I went to throw a, I threw a lazy kick to the leg just to see how he would react to it, to see if he would drop his front hand down. Of course, the next kick would, would have been to the head. But when I threw that lazy kick, it just so happens he ended up catching the dang kick and ended up taking me down. But he felt really strong in the clinch position on top. So it was very difficult for me to get back up. You know, I've got guys who uh, in the gym who fight at 185, 205, and Tyron felt just way stronger than those guys. Wow. So, you know what? Just just me walking around at a heavy weight is definitely going to help me out in that, those situations. Um, I felt fine the second and third round, but uh, in the fourth round, I felt really flat. Um, I, my movement was gone for some reason. Um, I saw the punches coming. I just didn't have. To, I just didn't react enough, fast enough, uh, to get out of the way or block them. I just basically was blocking with my face <laughs> in the fourth round. Uh, but after that fight, uh, after the fourth round, fifth round, I got my second win, and I ended up, uh, you know, uh, feeling very well in the fifth round. Mm-mm. Well, he spoke to, um, on the MMA Hour just this week, and how he was calling your kicks, and there was actually some monologue in the octagon uh, during the fight. Talk to us about that. What, what exactly happened? What was he saying? Did it throw you at all? No, not at all, man. You know, my dad was calling out uh, combos and things like that, and he acted like he knew exactly what I was going to do, but he didn't. You know, <laughs> it didn't throw me off one bit. What was he saying? Uh, you know, you know, he's like, oh, you know, money maker or a spin kick or. Um, <laughs> You know, my dad would say different codes. He was like, oh, I know exactly what that's going to be. I know I know what that's going to be. And I'm like, no, you don't. I'm sitting there telling him, like, no, you don't. You have no idea what that's going to be. And I would do something different, you know, or I'd throw the same same combination my dad was telling me. And he had no idea what was coming. But uh, I think he was just trying to play with my head, you know. And, that, and that's another aspect of the game that you got to watch out for. Um, you know, he, he's a champion for a reason, not only physically, mentally, but, you know, he, he goes out there and, and, and he, play, he knows how to play the game, mm. um, which is what I expected from the champ. I mean, yeah, you're obviously giving him a lot of respect. When you sort of got up off your stool and the fifth round started, you know, given how much of a favorite you were going to that fight, were you a little bit surprised that, you know, this fight had gone so far and that he had made it so far? Yeah, well, you know what? Um, I knew it was going to be a 5 5 in a round. And that's, that's, I always prepare for it just in case. You know, if a knockout happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But my cardio is, is there for a 5 5 in a round war. And that's what I'm prepared for it all the time. And that's a worst case scenario, really, for me. It's a 5 5 in a round war. But in that fifth round, I literally, I felt like I got my second win. I felt great. I could have gone two more rounds after that fifth round. Um, you know, just moving, picking, just trying to pick them apart. I knew it was slowing down. Um, but the round before that was definitely 
uh, a very difficult round for me. Mm. You know, like I said, I saw the punches come and didn't have enough time to react to it. He landed those big shots. I went down. I started recovering. And basically, to be honest with you, I don't remember the, the fourth round. The only thing I remember in that fourth round was being in that guillotine and thinking to myself, all these people came and spent money to watch me fight. I am not going to tap. You know, I'm not going to tap. And by the t- as soon as I thought that, I could feel his arms gassing out and started loosening up. So I stayed in that position, hoping his arms would gas out. And then, 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 then from there, I looked for my way out, ended up getting that top position and finishing it out on top. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, with that guillotine, was that a, a crank or was that, ac- was, he, was that actually in and was he actually choking you? And were you on your way out? It was actually a crank, to be honest with you. I mean, mm. his arms were in, but I had my chin in position, a good position. I could still breathe, but it was very difficult for me to breathe. And how tired I was, it was very difficult for me to breathe. And it was almost to the point where, man, I should tap to this. But I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to tap. There's, you know, he's got me in this guillotine. Um, if it's not choking me, I'm not tapping. Of course, it was hard to breathe, and I think most people would have tapped. But I was like, you know what, you know, screw this, man. You know, I, I, I've worked too hard to get to where I am. I'm not going to sit there and tap out. I, I'm going to go out if, if, if need be. But as soon as I thought that, his arm started, get, started to get tired, and I worked my way out. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 I mean, we, we've been in uh, crank guillotines before, even though we're not great at grappling. And I know that when, after I've been in a crank guillotine, my neck is just stuffed for a few days. How, how sore was your neck? In the next round oh, after that, did, did he tweak it? Was it tough to sort of move your head around? Did he pull something? Did he even possibly hurt it? Talk, talk to us about that. You know, I don't think he really uh, injured anything, I, but my neck from the top of my head all the way down to my dude, to the top of my butt is sore. And I mm. know it was from that guillotine, him cranking on that, on, that, on that puppy. You know, as soon as I started to get it, I try to defend, try to pot, you know, try to posture up. I knew I knew I couldn't posture up, so I started to get my butt up in the air to make it a little bit more difficult for him to get that crank in, and uh, it definitely worked. You know, um, everything that I've been working against uh, uh, defending guillotines, and I have a long neck. You know, I'm susceptible for guillotines, so a lot of guys throw that on me, so I know how to defend it very well. Mm. Well, fairly well, anyway. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, I ended up doing the right things. You know, and at that time, as soon as I uh, made up my mind. I'm not tapping. You know, um, I could feel his arms start to tire out. And I knew if I held on a little bit longer, I could. I was able to fight my way out of that. Mm. It was one of many amazing moments in in what was an amazing fight. Once it was over, how confident were you that you know you had done enough to win? And sort of before that correction was made, what went through your mind when Bruce Buffer announced Tyron as the winner? You know, I, I knew he won the first round. You know, he, he ended up taking me down off, of la- off that lazy, lazy kick. He was very strong on the ground, so I knew I couldn't get up uh, from that position. So I knew I had to wait it out. I knew I won the second and third round. That fourth round was obviously him, uh, and the fifth round was mine as well. So I figured I pulled out enough to, to, to win. But you know what? He is the champion, man. And, and uh, of course, they gave him, the I think, the 10-8 in the, in, in the fourth, I think. So one gave one judge gave him ten eight fourth round. One judge gave him ten eight uh, first round, which I don't I don't see that at all in the first round. But you know it, it is what it is, and it's going to make this second fight even that much better when I bring that title back, belt back home. You got to talk to us about that moment with the Bruce Buffer. I mean, we sp- we spoke to you a bit about it at the post fight press conference, and I mean it's it's been a little bit of time since it's ha- happened. So now that when you look back on it, uh, what sort of went through your mind when you saw Bruce leave the ring, come back, and reread the decision was it one of those situations where you were relieved because you knew you might get another shot at the title talk to us about the emotion that was going through your head as that was going on because it was a pretty crazy scene you know what in the beginning i did i really didn't see bruce barford kind of go in the cage go back out the cage i'm sitting there caught talking to my coaches and um of course he announced that tyron won the fight and then i'm, I'm sitting there like you know like, what the crap, man? I, I knew I won the second, third, and fifth round. What, the, You know, I'm going through my head, and I look at Dana White. He's like, no, dude, stay up in here. It was a draw. It was definitely a draw. I'm like, okay, crap, yes, man. This, this could this could definitely happen. We could definitely get another fight out of this. And um, so, you know, all those emotions going through my head, you know, what, what the, you know, thinking I won the fight and I didn't win the fight, and then going to, hey, you know, this is a draw. We can end up fighting again. It was all, it was chaos, to be honest with you. It was all crazy in my head, but the final judgment was you know it was a draw which means we 
are going to be able to fight again. And I think the fans enjoyed the fight. I think they loved it. Um, it was very exciting. So, dude, I'm so down to do it again. We're looking at February, hopefully, to get this uh, next title shot going. Oh, wow. There you go. I mean, we there was an interesting contrast. We saw Tyron sort of walking to the back, and, you know, he was visibly very, very disappointed. We saw you going back, and you, you and your dad were high-fiving fans, and you, you had, like, a big smile on your face. Even though the fight sort of didn't go your way, most people have said that you and Tyron are responsible for putting on Madison Square Garden's first MMA classic in a fight that, you know, will be remembered for the ages. Do you take solace in the fact that, you know, the, the way it's going to be remembered and the way people were moved by your fight? You know what? That, that That's exactly what I was thinking. Even though I didn't bring that belt home, I know I won a lot of fans over that night. Just, to, you know, a lot of people see me, um, uh, you know, as a fighter, but they don't, they don't see the heart that goes into it, the, the, the perseverance that goes into it. You know, they, they just see just me and I, and I don't look like a fighter. Um, but I'm glad that everybody, the, the world was able to see um, what kind of heart I have and perseverance and indomitable spirit I have um, in that octagon, you know. It doesn't matter who I face. Um, once I step out there, I'm out there to put on a show and, and give it all I got. There's no giving up in this guy. And and um, that's what I've been taught since day one, since I've been in this sport. And that's what every, all the fans are going to see. So anybody who steps out there with me knows that they're in for, uh, you know, a rough night. Mm. Well, in the lead up to this fight, there was a bit of rivalry between you and Tyron, and Tyron actually ended up apologizing in the post-fight press conference and called you a stand-up guy. I mean, what do you what do you think of that? And uh, Tyron as a person now is is the beef squashed, and do you feel like sort of a new beef will emerge if he doesn't sort of take this rematch and goes down another path? You know what? It, it is all respect, and you and you really don't learn about a whole lot about somebody until you fight them, and only fighters know what that feels like you know knowing what's in true what's in somebody truly deep down until after you fight them and there's a lot more respect after somebody you go out there and do battle with and uh, i think tyron felt that and tyron felt that and um you know much respect to him i've always had respect to him and i'm glad he he has a little bit more respect to me respect for me after that fight but you know what you know it is what it is and we're going to fight again and you know what i think just the fight alone does all the talking for us. I don't think we have to go out there and talk trash about anything. Um, I think everybody knows when we step out there, they're going to enjoy a show. We're going to put on a show and uh, fight for our lives, man. Mm. Dana Weiss said during the press conference that the rematch makes sense between the two of you. Have you, I mean, you said you're eyeing February. Have you had any further communications with anyone from the UFC to confirm that, you know, this is the fight that will be taking place? And who sort of, uh, who sort of, you know, said February? Was it you and your camp or anyone from the UFC? You know, we haven't heard anything yet from the UFC. Um, you know, that's just kind of what we're thinking mm. about healing up time, getting these, these lacerations on my nose uh, fixed. I don't have a broken nose, but it's just some just some uh, little lacerations that we need to get healed up and get back in the swing of things. Um, which, and to be honest with you, it's a short it's a short turnaround. But mm. um, um, you know. UFC hasn't said anything to us yet. I think they have. Um, they're, I think they're just waiting on me for, for me to heal up for both of us. And I know Tyron sh is uh, shooting for a shorter date. Uh, I know he's calling out uh, Conor McGregor. But I think, uh, you know, we I deserve it, man. I mean, you know, us going out there and, and it being a draw is like we never fought at all. You know, it's a tie, basically. So we we, we got to go out there and we got to settle this. And we're going to settle it um, – you know, hopefully here pretty soon. Yeah, what do you what do you think about this whole Conor McGregor thing? Do you think that uh, this is this this title rematch is owed to you? And it, I mean, if it doesn't happen, if Tyron does go in a different direction, what happens to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson? Do you sit out and wait? Do you fight someone else? Do you sort of what 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 do you do in that situation? You know, for me, I'm a fighter, man, and you know, fighters are gonna do. We're just gonna fight, and that's up to you know my management company and the UFC to figure out. But I do believe that I deserve that next the next uh, uh, title shot against Tyron Woodley because it, you know it was a draw. It was like we never fought at all. So we got to go out there and we got to settle who is the real champion. Who is it? You know, I think the fans enjoyed that last fight enough that that they're gonna be they're gonna tune in for that. Um, and I've heard a, from a lot of people who are excited about that next. Uh, title shot, uh, that rematch between me and Tyron. 
Mm-hmm. Any concerns on, on your mind? I mean, obviously, you know, I, I think this is the fight to make, you and Tyron rematch, but given the way the UFC a lot of times sort of, you know, makes the fights that Connor wants, we don't know what Connor wants, but is there any concern on your part that if Connor says, you know what, I want Tyron, you might somehow get leapfrogged in this situation? You know what? Not at all, man. To be honest with you, I think the UFC knows that I deserve that title shot. We uh, that I deserve that rematch. And you know what? Um, I think that uh, Conor McGregor's got to defend the 45 and the 55 title. Uh, and I just think he's too small for the 170 division. I mean, he's walking around right at 170, maybe a little bit less. It's just I don't think it would be a good division for him to step up to. Of yeah, course, I mean, well, showman, you know, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to say, while we're on the subject of McGregor, you were there, we were all there. What, what did you think about his win over Eddie Alvarez later on in the night? I thought it was outstanding, man. I mean, he went out there and did exactly what he said he was going to do. Um, uh, to be honest, it just looked like he played with him. You know, he played with uh, Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez is a monster. He's a beast and a good friend of mine. But he, he actually went out there and did exactly what he said he was going to do. He picked him apart and ended up winning with a TKO and... Um, Man, he's an amazing athlete. Not only can he can he um, talk to talk, but he can walk to walk. Mm. I mean, you got to give the guy credit. I mean, he put in an amazing performance. But you mentioned just before he's too small for one seventy. He's he's angling for that fight. We don't know if it'll happen, you know, at, at some point. But if that version of Conor McGregor that showed up against Eddie Alvarez came to one seventy against, say, Tyron or yourself, what do you think would happen? You know what? I think it would be a good fight, no matter what, man. I mean, he's he's one of the best fighters uh, out there, and that's what we're out to do. We're out to fight the best fighters in whatever division, whoever steps up. Um, you know, we'll take on any challenges, and I think that's what fighters do. And if you're a champion or not, you should take on all challenges. And, and uh, um, I think it would be a good fight. I think the, the, the fans would tune in to see who would win. It's interesting because he was sort of angling for this welterweight fight uh, sort of from the beginning during the fight week. Uh, I was there. I was asking Connor if he wanted Woodley's belt and asking Woodley what his thoughts on it were. And then we saw what happened at the early wanes. From being around that and seeing that, what did you think of McGregor as sort of uh, the ultimate businessman and already setting up his next moves and trying to get this rivalry started with Tyron Woodley? You know, I think it's very smart, very intelligent for him. You know, I mean, He's already out there, um, you know, talking trash to Tyron and and uh, doing his thing, man. I mean, doing what Conor McGregor does. I mean, just think about it. You know, a few years ago, he was living in his car. He had no money. Now he's a multimillionaire. I mean, hats off to that guy. That guy, uh, you know, I'm happy for that guy. A lot of people look look down on people who are successful, but Conor McGregor is successful because he runs his mouth and he knows how to put on a show. I mean, look at his, his press conferences. I mean, come on. People show up just to see him just act nuts. And it's um, hats off to that guy, man. He's a very intelligent, very smart guy. Uh, just quickly, Sam, we do really appreciate your time. On Chris Weidman, you guys have a close relationship. We saw both of you doing the press conference together. He, he mentioned that he was able to sort of get something positive out of this experience, even though he lost, obviously, in such a brutal fashion to Yol Romero. Have you spoken to Chris in the last few days? How's he doing? And was, was it you mentioned that you, you saw the fight and it was tough for you to sort of process how much, looking back on it, how much did that affect you going into your fight with uh, Woodley? How much did that sort of knock you off your mental game? You know, of course, it, it definitely hurt me, man. It hurt my heart, man, to see him actually going out there, winning the first and second round, and then just catching that flying knee um, and just putting him out. Of course, it definitely hurt me deep down, hurt for him and his family. And uh, But you know what? On the other hand, I know I know Chris Wybin's going to come back better and stronger than ever. Uh, that's just who he is, and that's how his heart is. But I, it didn't affect me one bit. I knew as, as soon as that was over, I knew how to get back in the zone and knew that I had business to do, and that was with Tyre Woodley that, that night, and I had to get in the zone. Um, you know, everybody keeps asking me, my performance, was it affected by that? I don't think so at all. You know, I, I went out there and, and fought my heart out, and Tyron is, is a very tough opponent. He's the champion for a reason. And, um, you know, we'll do it again. And I know Ty, I know Chris Wild will come back bigger and better and stronger than, than uh, what you guys saw him last time. Mm. Well, speaking of coming back bigger, better, and stronger, and, of course, you and Tyron doing this fight again, you spoke about the improvements before, but in, in your mind, why do you see yourself getting your hand raised this time when you guys do the rematch? And hopefully it is the rematch that happens. 
you know what? After every defeat, I'm, I always come back better and stronger. Um, that's just who I am. I, I, I know that, you know, it being a draw, that to me, that's a loss. And um, I accept that. And I'm going to go back with my coaches and I'm just going to get better. Uh, that's all I can do. And um, you know what? Uh, if I go out there with just uh, uh, um, a little bit more, uh, a little more of a skill set, uh, I've got the heart. Everybody knows I have the heart to go out there and and and, and take his shots and um, you know defend against the best fighters in the UFC. I'm going to go out there and give it all I got, and, and that's all I that's all I can see. I can just see my hand raised. I know I'm going to go back and prep, uh, prepare myself for the best and um, fix anything that I need to fix. Uh, I always come in the gym with my with my cup empty, and uh, I'm gonna go out there and give it all my God. And, and if it win or lost, the fans are gonna be impressed, and they're gonna know that I am a warrior. And well, lastly, Stephen, we know how important it is for you to set an example for your students back in Simpsonville, South Carolina. And we saw the, um, some of your students. The, there was a cute moment that you put up on Instagram. They came into the class and they had like fake black eyes that they put on to support you when, when you came back. So. Talk to us a little bit about that uh, reaction during your homecoming from your students and people at the, at the karate school and people in your hometown. How has it been? How has the support been? How, how has it been dealing with everybody since you've come back from New York? You know what? It's just all been amazing. You know, I, got, I flew in late Sunday night after the fight, and I expected to go home and go straight to sleep, just kind of heal up and rest. And next thing you know, I was being escorted by you know police officers to our city and um, there was there was hundreds and hundreds of people out there supporting me, and that just you know got emotional. I even though I didn't bring the title home, it meant the world to me that all my my community, my friends, my family were there to support me no matter what. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to get better, better and stronger is for them. You know, um, it was just amazing. You know, the next week, of course, I'm coming in karate class with uh, looking like a raccoon two black eyes <laughs> my students are coming in with makeup on with black eyes supporting my black eyes it was awesome man. It, it definitely would just just puts a smile on my face and 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 um much more affectionate to my students man it was awesome it was unbelievable well, that's an amazing moment in on itself. And Stephen, we just wanted to say thank you. And obviously to Tyron as well, but since we got you here on the line right now, we just want to say thank you for what was an amazing, amazing fight. Everybody unanimously enjoyed it, and the crowd was uh, extremely into it when, uh, when we were there watching the fight. So thank you for putting on an amazing performance. Uh, we hope that rematch happens. Guys, don't forget to follow Stephen Wonderboy Thompson on Twitter and Instagram at Wonderboy MMA. A lot of goodness there. And uh, we thank you for your time. Thanks so much for popping on the program. We always enjoy talking to you, Stephen. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you having him on. You guys have a good one.